Um, let's telescope into Netscope's IPO. The cybersecurity stock right now is popping after pricing at $19 a share, opened at $23. Right now it's at $22.83 for a gain of 20%. The valuation stands at $8.79 billion. The company's Netscope One platform incorporates AI models to help companies protect hackers but to protect customers from hackers and keep sensitive data secure. Customers include BMO, Colgate Palmolive, Home Depot, Hugo Boss, Qualcomm, and Tyson Foods, among others. Joining us now, Netscope CEO Sanjay Berry. Sanjay, first of all, congratulations. This was 20 times oversubscribed as an IPO. It's a really solid day today, but explain to our viewers what makes you different from all the others out there, the Palo Alto networks of the world, the Zscalers. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at the world today, cloud and AI, nobody wants to say no to them, but nobody can just say yes. If you say yes to AI and you don't have any controls, you don't know where your data is going. What we do is we let people say yes and we put the guardrails around it so their data is secure. That's the difference. We were built for this cloud and AI age versus the web world. Okay, so can you explain to me how a Colgate Palmolive would, I mean, walk me through a process where suddenly Netscope comes popping up. Absolutely. So let's say you're a company and you say, look, I'd like people to use ChatGPT. But you say, well, wait a minute. I don't want them sending a query that says, check my source code, my confidential source code mm. to, chat, to OpenAI. What we do is we say, if they do that to a personal version of ChatGPT, not allowed. If they do it to a corporate version, LLM, it's okay. And so we give them the ability to understand how is data being used with AI? How is it being used with cloud? Let's make sure your employees unleash AI, but use it in the right way. Well, we have seen more than, well, close to 200 million people downloading ChatGPT, and it's made everybody's lives much better, certainly when it comes to productivity. So what you're telling me is, let's just say, and I'm using Colgate as an example, mm -hmm. I'm in the toothpaste division and I am cutting and pasting from the private archives, maybe some type of yeah. alchemy or chemical recipe of toothpaste or who knows what else. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out a better way of putting it together. And I cut and paste it and I put it in there. If I press go, mm -hmm. what does Netscope do? Does it kick in and say, hold up? If you press go and you try to submit it to like a public version, okay. it will stop it and tell that person, hey, this isn't the right thing to do. Really? We're going to stop it. If you want to do this, please use this other app or other version that's corporate. You know, there are new threat focuses out there. Give me what they are. What are you seeing? What's the worst thing you've seen happen that Netscope is able to just slam the door on? Yeah, so a couple of things. One, when you look at LLMs and AI, when you send a query, they're returning phishing links. They're returning malware. They're the new source of threat. When you look at a website, you figure you go to a website, it's clean, mm -hmm. and you go to bad websites and people stop it. But who stops the LLM from returning that type of data? Wow. Where's the governance? What we do is we watch that. We look for threats. We look for sensitive data. We make sure people are using their AI applications, their LLMs, and the 100,000 plus cloud apps properly. Okay, so you know, you're not profitable. You reported a net loss of $169.5 million in the six months ending July 31st. What is your path to profitability? So we are cash flow positive. We just put nearly a billion dollars on our balance sheet. Our margins have inflected. We're in the mid 70s on a gross margin side. Mm -hmm. Over a year, 20 plus percentage uh, improvement on our op margin. So our op margin will follow. And what are the, what's the rate of subscribers signing up year after year? We have 33% growth in ARR. So we're subscription and year on year one of the fastest growing software slash infrastructure AI companies. Yeah, you know, you've got good recurring year over year revenue yeah. of more than $700 million. Are you concerned at all? Because we've seen this in the past pullbacks in spending by corporations, by enterprise operations, where they, they have to look and they have to cut, you know, s different pieces when, when times get worrisome. Sure. Not that we have that right now, but could happen. What's your plan to battle that? So here's the thing. When they cut, what do they cut? They say, I don't want to throw more bad money after bad money. And bad money is things that don't let them use cloud and AI. And so what it actually forces them to do is shut off their old systems and move to something that moves them forward. So for us, we want them to do that.
We want them to figure out, I need to save money, yet I need to move us forward. That pushes them to us. Um, if anybody wonders about Sanjay, you created one of the first browsers at Microsoft, <laughs> the first browser at Microsoft. <laughs> Boy, back in the day. Yeah, I worked on one of the first IE versions. I was a developer, I was just working on it. <laughs> so. Listen, yeah, well, the developers are the, the heroes the key. in, in, in yeah. much of this, and uh, yeah. it's good to see you starting a company and, and taking a public. Yeah, I appreciate that. We Thanks for having me. We will continue to watch it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Appreciate it.